However, which is the best which is the best approach to adopt, and what information source will provide POP industry with the required level of detail and understanding that is needed to guide them through the issues surrounding sustainability? The conclusion that we have drawn from our assessment of the POP industry's prevailing knowledge is that organisations' behaviour only changes when their previous approach is challenged, only when somebody stands up and details that the previous approach, such as embedding 14,001 or carbon footprinting, is insufficient, will companies take a step back and try and look at the wider picture and embed a new approach to sustainability. Secondly, that many, that many bodies contribute to the sustainability knowledge bank within the POP industry. However, no one is willing to take ownership of it, a reflection of activity that can be seen in the wider sustainability debate. And thirdly, that, difference, that the different sustainability philosophies that are used and employed by the organisation often determine the approach to sustainability that is adopted. Therefore, if organisations um, adopt Gaia or social justice or a research consumption-based approach, they will, offer, they will often look and understand sustainability to be different than what different organisations do. But which approach to sustainability should be taken by an industry that is as diverse as the POP industry? The industry's prevailing knowledge leads them to adopt significantly a systems-based approach. And success in this area previously takes them to this point. We can see this by the adoption of ISO 14001, 9001. Companies are happy with this approach, that it works and that it can be followed to the letter. However, the main consequence of this is that no organisational cultural change ever occurs or takes place. There are many barriers to sustainability. However, some of the ones that we have seen and encountered through our research projects I will now detail. The first is an, is an over-reliance on individuals to push the sustainability agenda. Often without a sustainability or eco-champion within, within an organisation, sustainability is either pushed to the back of the agenda or flounders in the back as it is not business's main priority at the moment without someone who is passionate to push it further and further along a, an organisation's agenda. The second is lack of knowledge and incentive. Often there is a superficial knowledge on sustainability and what sustainability, sustainability really means. This coupled with a lack of incentive with brands and retailers and wider industry not calling for more action in regards to environmental change leads to lack of action and lack of want to, to proceed with sustainability. Thirdly, there is a lack of there is a lack of a sector specific consensus on what sustainability actually means and how it should be approached. Without an agreed definition and term for sustainability, there will be no real progress in this area. Fourthly, the nature of the POP industry is often seen as a catch twenty two. It is cost driven and with POP in store ranging from a matter of two weeks to two years. There is often difficulty in marrying sustainability, fit for purpose and cost all in the same area. Additionally, there are three main barriers that we have encountered time and time again. The first is an unwillingness for the POP industry to share best practice as they believe that this will hinder and reduce their competitive advantage. This then leads on to a lack of a collaborative approach to sustainability within the POP industry, leading to inconsistent approaches and superficial knowledge. And finally, the free creative nature of the design industry needs designers to think that sustainability will hinder them in their design process. They do not want to be broken down by another barrier to their design process. They believe that sustainability will hinder innovation instead of driving it. Finally, our findings. The first is that Popeye is a catalyst for change. As an independent body, Popeye is providing resources, education and knowledge in best practice and in sustainability to facilitate a knowledge generation. 
Popeye is becoming an advocate of change, an independent advocate of change that the organisations and POP industry can rely on. The second finding that we that we have seen is that what drives sustainability is of little consequence. Whether the driver is cultural, physical, environmental, it doesn't matter as long as that they are all aiming for the same sustainability agenda. And thirdly, the organisational hierarchy impacts directly on the success of embedding sustainability within businesses. The organisational hierarchy can be seen in one key research finding that we will now explore in more depth, which is the role of eco-champions. The role and position of an eco-champion plays significant impact on the approach to the adoption of sustainability approaches to design within the organisation. There are five approaches that we have seen by eco-champions based on their roles within organisations. The first is a marketing-led approach. Marketing-led approaches often use sustainability as eco-collateral and greenwash and can be demonstrated by the adoption of eco or green product ranges within an organisation. The second approach that we have seen is by environmental managers. Environmental managers are often focused on resource consumption, use and management, and waste and emission management. Therefore, they are often focused on these areas as a consequence of production, rather than on the design process as a whole. Thirdly, a quality health, safety and environment-led approach is very similar to an environmental manager's approach. However, they are operations and process-led. Therefore, their main focus is on manufacturing processes and on implementing processes to manage the environmental impact. Therefore, in this adoption to sustainability, 14,001 is very dominant. A fourth approach is the design-led approach. A 70% of all environmental impacts are made at the decisions are made in the design process. A design-led approach is often the best and is developed from the design brief and design decisions that are made during the design process. Fifthly and finally is a managing director-led approach. This is personal based on their own philosophy, beliefs and interpretations and engages sustainability on a different level. However, what we have what we have seen and what we believe is that sustainability and its successful embedding within organisations and retail design is that it must use the best points of each of these five outlined approaches and must embed sustainability holistically and entirely. To conclude, the PAP industry cannot be expected to adopt approaches to sustainable design independently or without support from partners such as organisations as Popeye. Once the partner has been identified, there are four key factors that must be satisfied for the approach to sustainable retail design to be successful. The first is that organisations must possess knowledge. They must possess knowledge that is not superficial and that is relevant to their industry and their business activities. This then leads into an understanding the organisation must have a depth of understanding that allows them to interpret their knowledge and outline key applications. Thirdly, there must be a positive attitude towards sustainability, whether this is shown and demonstrated by eco-champions or simply by the successful embedding of knowledge within the organisation. And finally, then the positive attitudes, knowledge and understanding to sustainability must then be translated into behaviour. Therefore, we have created an equation that sums up how sustainable retail design can be embedded within the POP industry. There must first be knowledge and understanding, positive attitudes which then translate into positive behaviour, which equals sustainable retail design output. Myself and Richard Chips would like to thank and acknowledge the following for their con contribution and support to this research project. Firstly, De Montfort University and Popeye UK in Ireland, HRG UK Limited, Wilmot Budgeon, Sector Design, FDA Packaging. Thank you very much for reviewing our sustainability presentation. For more information or if you have any questions, please contact 
myself or Richard Chips on the email addresses that I provided below. Thank you very much.